Reggie's Corner Variety Gaming. Another day, another mission, risking our necks for the Ark. You know, I ask myself, Ducks, why are you out here? And you know why. The Ark's water pump is broken again, and Hammond said he needs more scrap to fix it. Yeah, well, we'd do it a lot better if he'd sent us somewhere with actual scrap to find. Why do you have to be so annoying? Come on. We gotta head back before Prep closes for the night. We're now in the very game? first mission, is that correct? Yeah, so to speak, we are just entering the game. We are out scavenging for um, material parts for the Ark. And we are on our back home, so that's the the general guest of, of it so, so yeah uh, one quick thing to mention for people who are interested we have uh, the graphics set to the highest quality possible and it's on PC so um, if you like how it looks that's the settings we are using yes all right so before we uh, go any further we can talk about a few core concepts yes first of all this is um, kind of a sneak game or stealth game so to X speak. XCOMI game. Exactly, but the main difference is that as you will see that when you enter combat you can actually um, get an advantage of sneaking up behind and take an extra turn and you can attack without the enemies knowing that you're there and so on. So we'll see a lot about that. Yep. But before we do anything else I will actually show a little bit about the map. Sounds good. Because the map is one of the places where we do have our first Swedish reference. Yes. So, for example, uh, if we begin where we are at the Metal Bird, we have seen that some someone has uh, printed or write something down here. And yep. what it says is Skrik Dalen. And that will be translated to the Screaming Valley, I or guess. Shouting Valley or Sh something like yeah. that. Uh, it's basically Screaming and Valley. And here we have metal flugen, and that is um, metal mosquito, metal mosquito or metal fly. Uh, so yeah. And uh, here we are. It's a bit dark, but the mörka pelarna undvik and the dark pillars uh, avoid, avoid or stay out. Or yeah. So we have uh, something here as well. Uh, röta, and <laughs> yeah, that that's a funny Swedish word because that is. Uh, uh, when you have, when you're very lucky, yeah. But it could also be something that if you have, it's it's rotten. It's that when you have trees that are yeah. uh, infected with worms or something, yeah, it then it starts rot, to or it could be yeah, fluke. Exactly. So it's a mm. double word. Mm. Mm. Uh, and here we have und bråd död. That's basically um, uh, very nasty mm. death. Place, it's sticky place. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, someone, some place you don't want to be, basically. Yeah. And here we have Jordbron, and it's the Earth Bridge. Yeah. But I think due to the um, the looks of it, it's more of like uh, communication. So the bridge is mm. not an actual bridge; it's more of a bridge to the sky or something, yeah. Yeah. something like that. True. True. And here we have uh, Verden Sende, that's end of the world. Yeah, so it's basically the end of the map, mm. or like the edge of the map. Vita Stenen, the, the white stone, or the white mountain. Yeah. And uh, see if something... I think that's all of it. If we spot something else, we will, will definitely yeah. talk about it when we get there. Yeah. But yeah, those are some... The Swedish phrases Swedish already. already, and uh, the game, as we said, is in, or like in uh, two modes. First, first we have the flashlight. Yep. We're in the zone. Keep your eyes open and mouth shut. Yeah, you only told me that nine thousand times already, morning. So, as I said about the flashlight, you will walk faster. When we have the flashlight on, yeah, 
uh, but you will be easily spotted by the enemies. So this is basically running and this is like crouching. That's the only two modes of moving. Yeah. And here we all have the two first Swedish signs and uh, we, uh, it's a tin Tingberg, Knaptorp and basically nothing that really resembles just names. Yeah, like Tingberg and Knaptorp could be like Knapp Cottage or something like that. But it's basically just Ting is basically where you had the gathering, like like the Vikings and so on. When the the council, exactly, Mm. and Berg is a mountain. So it's like meeting at a mountain, mountain, Mm. but it's just a name. Just a name. So So we will uh, go on with the flashlight and we will just start moving along the edges because, like, often you will see, you will find like. uh, piles of uh, scrap that you will collect and uh, use for the different things yep. later on in the game. Um, there are of course a few hidden things but Look it's not this. like... Beautiful. Just beautiful. This scrap's gonna make us heroes back at the arc. We have to mention that the voice work in this game is amazing. Yeah, exactly. We should also introduce that... The guys. Yeah, so this is a Bormir. And, and he's a yeah he's a boar exactly and then we have a duck and you can also of course uh, you can switch so you can uh, yeah that was the first enemy yeah exactly so now we will turn off our flashlight and So, as you see, the white circles are the representation of the view. So if you have played Metal Gear Solid, you will get a solid idea of what this is. Because this is the first time, you have mm. to get the tutorial, basically. Yeah. We will go into everything like that. You know what? Like, yeah, exactly. So, when uh, uh, I just really skip this through and, and explain about the combat system. Yeah. As we see, at the moment, we have those kind of mask symbols that means that we are hidden so if we are able to kill this enemy uh, in the first turn mm. that will mean that this enemy will not spot us yes. so base you have like two action points per character so you can like run move or shoot basically overwatch and uh, items. So for anyone that's played XCOM, it's very, it's the same basically. Yeah. And as we say, at this point we have a 75% chance of uh, hitting mm-hmm. and we have a 20% crit chance. So we will begin with duck and uh, take a shot and we will see that it will do 4 damage and if so, if we make the shot, the enemy will die. And the ducks has what they call a silent weapon. So that will not make, as you say, we are out of combat now. Yeah. Uh, Guys, come here. So another thing that we can do is that if we would like to play, we could do we can do it like this. We can hide and we can hide here. Then as long as we are hidden, the enemy can walk right past us without mm. so then you can use that in order to like um, yeah, get to areas where you couldn't mm. and just wait out enemies or so, get better yeah. kill shots and stuff like that. So basically now we will uh, try to um, uh, to attack from behind. Uh, just for demonstration purpose, I will switch to Bormir and see what, what will happen if I just move and uh, get spotted. As you see, now we are spotted yeah. and if we're not able to kill, then he will get us in the next round, so yeah. to speak. But I'm pretty sure that he will go down pretty yeah. easily. Yeah. Uh, and of course, the enemies leave scraps or loot. stuff, loot. And it's always good to pick yeah. up loot. And now we pick up our first weapon modules. There will be many kind of modules that you can evolve and upgrade your weapons with. So you, you the, it's um, there will be a lot of those parts. That's and is Swedish on this play? Mayhaps? No, I don't think so. No. But of course, 
that's also that these mutants have no idea of the old world so they are think they they don't recognize things like a refrigerator and stuff yeah, and they have they their own theories about a lot of stuff that we recognize immediately mm. they have like weird fantasy or made up facts about like yeah. you know, toasters and whatnot yeah exactly that's a good old pickup truck yeah exactly there will be uh, quite a lot of like Swedish old Swedish uh, car modules and yep. uh, stuff like that. All right, so oh, here. Bulls. I don't like the look of that big one. We have to be sneaky. Okay, here's the plan. We turn off our lights, then hug the water, go around them. Okay, so these red schools, as they say, they are too high to like. Uh, yeah. You engaged. should avoid them, and uh, there are quite a lot of like replayability or not replayability, but you can tackle situations in different ways. Yeah, exactly. That's kind yeah. of what we're trying to say. And there are a bit of backtracking yeah. also. Yeah. And it's not always a good idea to take the fight. Yeah. Sneaking is an integral part of this game. Yeah. So now we move on from the first entry point so to the, the next one. Metal bird was the downed plane, so it wasn't a bird. No. Well, it was a bird, and it wasn't. The arcs in the head. Home, sweet home. Uh, just gonna check something a bit. Yeah. I'm gonna kiss that elevator when I see it. Get upstairs, take a bath. So, uh, for the viewers, you've played through this campaign once already. Yep. How long of a game is it? Mm, depends on how good you are at these kind of games. If you are a seasoned uh, XCOM player, you will probably be like 5-6 hours maybe. Depending also on how much... If you're trying to grind everything out, take every single enemy, or if you're just like playing along. Um, Nothing like a bunch of skeletons to put your mind at ease. So, uh, but I would say that from like a speedrun perspective or something, it would yeah. be probably There's an hour. Hmm. Definitely feel a ghoul vibe coming off of it. So we run in, guns blazing, too dangerous. If we're sneaky, we can get into a good position. A good position keeps us alive. Turn off your flashlight. Yeah. And we will usually be quiet when there's like a cutscene and stuff like that. Yeah. So you can hear what they're saying. Exactly. So if we are like suddenly... Yeah. yeah. Uh, if we're silent for a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we'll try to make sure you don't miss out and stuff. Mm. Also, for a Swedish person, like a lot of these environments are typical of our wooded areas, yeah. like small cabins and um, like dense forestry and stuff like that. Yeah. So they have done a really good job of like catching the environment. Yeah, for sure. They should have heard that, but they yeah. they never do though. So like, if they're not in hearsight or eyesight, Ooh. they won't catch you. So we will just have seen uh, actually no we do not it's not worth it uh, it has a special ability that it can destroy covers and knock back enemies but the the damage well it depends it's one more damage in the natural damage but the crit damage is so it's mm, yeah yeah no we we don't we don't do that at this point so here we are three enemies we should actually switch to Mr. Duck and see if we can get one of those well, silent, kill. silent kills so basically we will wait for this butcher to come and get us so yeah. what we can do is that we can see if I can right so we can activate the ducks and take a hundred percent shot and that would, of course, take that guy out. Yep. I'm a death dealing, soul stealing, stalking machine, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's a lot of like. Yes. And we have a level up. Yeah. So then we can talk about mutations. As we said in the introduction parts, 
uh, when you level up you actually mutate your body with new uh, traits yeah. in this game sadly enough it's you will not see really new things on the body because in the original pen and paper RPG yeah. the body will actually evolve with like new arms and stuff and so on and so on yeah. and that would have been cool yeah. but I can understand why they didn't put yeah. a lot of time into that so we will actually spare the one point for Boromir but we will take this ability for ducks and that's basically uh, you offer y y a bit of um, your so if you have a hundred percent chance of hitting it will be like 75 percent chance but you will get a hundred percent crit chance yeah and one thing that uh, struck me when I was playing the first time is that when you have uh, added this kind of level ups or abilities you need to go to inventory now it's out of sign but when mm. you have more of them you need to actually choose them instead of like out to turning them on so to speak yeah uh, we can talk a little bit about what you have here also. You have yeah, a primary well. weapon, secondary weapon. There, You don't need to have a gun as your secondary weapon. It can be like a crossbow and a shotgun, so yeah. no limitations like that. You have grenades, and then we will get armor yeah. stuff. And there are no real limitations on how much you can put in your backpack. Which is so, nice. Yeah. Also, just a quick thing. Now we see that when we play as duck, we see that uh, they have skulls up. Uh, that is, when we activate an ability, you need, for example, to kill three targets un until next time you can use that yeah. ability. But when we now, we if we, because we're playing a normal, uh, here. we will get those reset after each fight. Yeah. Which you won't get on harder difficulties. No. So this game is quite hard on the harder difficulties. Yeah, it's really hard actually. Let's see if we can uh, take these guys out. We probably could. So, let's see. So we can take out that Marauder and we could probably get close enough in Boromir to take out the other guy. So let, yeah. yeah, let's do it. It's not that big of a deal in the, in the beginning of the game, of course, as in most games. It's, uh, yeah, it's tutorial levels mm. and not super hard enemies. Yeah. So we just were close enough to get a better percent of hitting. Yeah. So. One thing, uh, XCOM games you can actually lose your guys permanently yeah. if they go below zero. How yeah. does it work in this game? Um, you have a s certain amount of turns to uh, um, to heal or to, to get your guy back on its feet. Mm. Uh, if they actually die, it is uh, game over basically. Yeah. So either you do it or you don't. So yeah. It's not an XCOM where you can lose all your guys and still be in the game. Yeah, exactly. Um, exa one more thing is that we, if, because we are playing a normal, we will get uh, our health back after each. And that is of course not true if you play... So they found a boombox. Mm. And they think it's a bomb because it's called a boom box. Yeah. So that's one of those things we mentioned before. They they don't really know what they find, so they make stuff up. Yeah. Yeah. So all these kind of relics, they are actually quite important because they will give you, for example. 20% discounted store, yeah, your it's grenades good to, um, are doing double damage and stuff like that. It's good to be kind of thorough on the maps, uh, look everywhere, mm. or at least look a little bit so you don't miss everything. Yeah, and uh, as you also, these kind of uh, scraps that we are picking up are two kinds of scraps. One is a currency, mm. and the other ones are gun parts, and the gun parts are for uh, modifying your yeah. guns. And yeah, that's important. Yeah, because you want good guns. One important thing is that you can't sell items in this game. You can um, 
you can dismantle yeah. uh, guns into parts, parts and but, reuse them, right? But you can't like sell grenades in order to buy medpacks for example. Yeah. Of course the world ends. You Which is a little bit strange. Yeah. When the ice melted, you said nothing. When the plague spread, you did nothing. When the nukes dropped, you became nothing. At least that's what the Elder says. But cheer up. You'll be happy to know that despite your mistakes, life remains. In a small settlement high above a raging river, people are living and thriving. We call it the Ark. The Ark is humanity's last outpost, along the island in an ocean of chaos. Within these walls, we help each other create a new civilization on the ruins of the old one, with the guidance of our leader, the Elder. The Elder tells us we're safe as long as we never leave, because outside these walls lies the zone, the never-ending wasteland. A mass grave spanning the planet Littered with your crumbling monuments to your hubris and arrogance. What the Elder chooses not to tell us is our food and water supplies are running dangerously low. That's why he relies on stalkers. Adventures that you leave the dark, explore the zone and scavenge for precious resources. Stalkers are tough enough to resist the rock, and they got the smarts and the firepower to keep the zone goons at bay. Stalkers have to be more than human. That's me, Mr. More Than Human, a.k.a. The Mutant. I look weird to you, but hey, you look weird to me. So let's leave it at that. If the Stalkers come back from the zone alive, the Ark survives another day. If the Stalkers don't come back, the legacy of mankind will be lost forever. At least, that's what the Elder says. Yeah, so that was the basic introduction. Yeah. Home sweet home. The elevator's up ahead. Thank you for watching part one of this Let's Play of Mutant Year Zero Road to Eden The World Explained. If you like it, feel free to hit that like and subscribe button. And we also hope to see you again in the next part. But for now, it is. Bye-bye.